Mirror, mirror, on the wall, how did I get to looking so old? Well, do not fear because in today's episode of Dr. Nora, I take you through the science behind the aging face and what you can do to help prevent that aging process. Every day we are constantly aging thanks to a number of things that are going on in our bodies and unfortunately it's not just skin deep it's a lot deeper than that let's go through each of the layers one by one as you can see on this diagram there are plenty of layers to your face and we're going to break them down nice and easy so you guys can understand what happens as we age first up let's talk about the skin the skin is the largest barrier on our body it helps keep us nice and safe from any toxins anything that hits our skin it is there to protect us however unfortunately there's a couple of things that can go a little bit wrong as we get older Skin is made up of collagen, which helps keep our skin nice and plump and voluminous. And it's also made of elastin fibers, which are the ones that causes our skin to recoil back and gives us that nice bouncy looking face. As we get older, unfortunately, the elasticity of our skin actually decreases. And this usually happens around 30 to 40 years old. At around 25 years old, our collagen production also naturally decreases as well. And you can imagine the net impact of this is that our skin becomes less plump and also becomes less elastic as well, which means that we might be expressing, for example, those wrinkles just stay on our face and the skin doesn't curl back. Not looking good so far. Not only does our collagen and our elastin decrease, we also get drier and rougher skin. And this is thanks to our sweat and oil glands decreasing as we get older as well. But on top of that, the sun or the sun, anyone that's had chronic UV exposure in the past can start to develop sunspots or age spots. Now this is pigmentation of the skin, not to be confused with other moles. These pigmentations appear typically as flat tan brown pigments on the skin. And this is because of an accumulation of melanin, which is the pigment that causes our skin to be colored, to clump up in certain areas of the skin, particularly in those of the sun exposed areas, and it creates something called an age spot. Now, a word of warning for you guys out there, if you do think you have got age spots, please make sure that you check with your medical doctor because sometimes you might misdiagnose it for something else when actually it could be something a lot more serious. And as we said before, wrinkles do start to appear as we get older and this is thanks to that loss of elasticity, the loss of the skin to be able to rebounce back after giving you guys a big smile or a big frowny face. And sometimes those wrinkles just last there for, well, what seems like an eternity. Oh, Dr. Nora, there's got to be more. There's got to be more than just skin. Well, yes, unfortunately there is. As we go past the skin layer, our face is made up of a number of fat pads. These are literally everywhere and they're superficial in nature, which means they're not too deep. They're quite superficial onto the face. As a young person, you would have typically full voluminous fat pads all over your face, which helps to make your face look nice and plump. However, as we get older, the fat starts to degrade. And unfortunately, due to gravity, we get a lot of pulling down of those fat pads. And so we end up, in the end, looking quite heavy on the bottom of our face. We might have some jowl starting to appear as well, and some deep folds also starting to appear. Thanks, gravity. Going on from the fatty tissue, we then have what we call retaining ligaments. These are ligaments that act, essentially act as anchor points on our face. And there are four main retaining ligaments of the face that help to keep us nice and structured and nice and tight. As with any ligament, with time, those ligaments do become more lax and so essentially become looser. So this in combination with the skin getting more degraded, loss of elasticity, loss of collagen, and the fat being degraded as well, we also get the retaining ligaments becoming more lax. And so the net impact of that is our face becomes a lot more saggier, we become a lot more heavier in the bottom of our face, and generally we just look a lot more aged. All right, Dr. Nora, that's it. There surely can't be any more. Surely not. Well, guys, you're forgetting the bones. Yes, that is right. Our bones are there to provide us a beautiful facial structure. You might have GG Hadid cheekbones, really strong, high arch cheekbones, and they're all thanks to your bones. But what happens, unfortunately, with age is those bones start to resorb because of a loss of bone density. And so our bones start to look a little bit flatter. They're no longer those beautiful, prominent bones that we saw when we were, say, 20 or 25 years old. And even more so, there are certain areas of the face that start to look a little bit more involuted. For example, the orbits of the eyes tend to look a little bit more involuted. So if you think about, for example, your elderly grandma, you might notice that she has a sunken appearance of the eyes. You'll also notice that the jawline becomes less defined and the chin also starts to recede as well. And so we lose the structure of the chin. But it's not all bad news because the forehead, the mouth and the nose become more prominent. This could or could not be a good thing, depending on how you view life. So there we have the roundup of the different layers of the face and how they age. But what are the modifiable factors that you guys can do at home to make sure you don't accelerate that aging process? 
we know certainly there are some things in life that will certainly accelerate your aging process and these can be as follows number one smoking oh, guys studies have shown that smoking actually has a number of impacts on the aging face for example we know that with smoking we decrease the amount of collagen production which means that plumpness to our face is decreased but not only that nicotine actually decreases the skin thickness which in turn makes the skin less elastic and so therefore you don't get that plumpness of the face you don't get that elasticity recoil and you end up with more wrinkles why would you smoke on a side note if you guys are struggling to quit smoking be sure to watch my video on how to quit smoking effectively in the link in the description below okay smoking fine maybe i can deal with that but what else is there well alcohol alcohol can certainly cause our faces to age prematurely now this is because alcohol makes our skin very dehydrated and so it makes it very dry and therefore it appears more saggy as well Next up, we have the sun. Living in Australia, the UV is always at an all-time high. As I mentioned earlier, age spots can certainly arise if you are somebody who does like sunbathing, for example, if you've got chronic UV exposure. But not only that, we do know that the sun also damages the elastin fibers in the skin. And we know that from previously, once elastin fibers are damaged, then it will cause that loss of elasticity to the skin, hence leading to wrinkles and also sagginess of the skin as well. On another note that can cause the face to age prematurely is stress. Yes, we all deal with stress on some shape or form, whether it's physical stress, emotional stress, or mental stress. These have actually been proven since the ancient times to cause the aging face to accelerate a little bit more quicker. And we understand this because we believe that some of the chemicals within the body are actually changed and that leads to a decrease in the elasticity of the face as well. Of course, these are all factors that you can modify, but there are some individual factors that certainly can't be modified. For example, your genetics. It might be that some of you are blessed out there and you've got a beautiful baby face for the whole of your life thanks to your parents or your grandparents, but you also may be aging a little bit faster than others, not only because of the modifiable factors, but perhaps because of any underlying medical conditions. Of course, there are a number of factors that you can do to help prevent your face from aging prematurely, which as what we said was the smoking, the alcohol, stress if you can, and also your decreased sun exposure. So that means wearing SPF at least 30 every day on a daily basis and moisturizing your skin. Oh, do I have a treat for you about moisturizers? Well, certainly there are some other things that you guys can do at home to help to prevent your face from aging prematurely. As we said, SPF 30 at least is a good idea to do if you are going out in the sun, if you live in a hot climate like myself. But secondly, there are lots of treatments at home that you can do. Now, it's worthwhile always checking with your own medical practitioner before you go undergo any of these treatments, because certainly as an individual, some risk factors may be present and it may not be suitable for yourself. But there are loads of moisturizers out there and they typically have lots of hyper anti-aging properties and how your face can look younger by 10 years in just one application. But do they actually work and what moisturizer do I go for? Well, there are some big ingredients out there that we do know can help the face. And I'll go through them now to make sure that you guys are well informed of which moisturizer to use. First up, vitamin E. Vitamin E is an antioxidant and it also helps strengthen the skin barrier. And so by using a moisturizer or a cream that contains vitamin E, it helps to give you a bit of strength, regain that strength back into your skin. You may also want to consider topical hyaluronic acid. Now, hyaluronic acid generally we see in dermal fillers because we inject hyaluronic acid into the face to increase the plumpness. And naturally we do have hyaluronic acid in our bodies, but as I mentioned before, things start to decrease and so the plumpness of our skin also decreases as well. By applying some topical hyaluronic acid, you may help to reduce the appearance of wrinkles, but remember it won't work as effectively in plumbing the skin as say, for example, a dermal filler. Now, just to give you an idea of dermal fillers. So over here, I've got a beautiful before and after picture, which was generated by an application called Treatment Pad, which allows me to provide my patients a really instantaneous before and after picture accurately at a touch of a button but over here we can see that there is a before picture and an after picture on the before picture we can see that the the upper lip is very thin it's not very plump but once we've injected some dermal filler into the lip it looks a lot more voluminous now typically if you were to put a hyaluronic acid cream onto your face you won't get the same appearances as you would with an injected hyaluronic acid but this is just one of the many things that hyaluronic acid is capable of doing another chemical that is out there that can help to improve your skin quality is vitamin a1 otherwise known as retinol this is a topical chemical that essentially acts on the inner surfaces of the skin it works by slowing down collagen degradation and reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles but word of caution for you guys not everybody can use this topical treatment and you really must discuss it with your own medical doctor because there are special groups of people that is simply is a no-no if you check with your medical doctor and they said yep it's fine for you to go ahead and use it then be sure to always wear sun protection because your skin becomes a lot more photosensitive or a lot more sensitive to the sun when you're going out so be sure to always wear a wide-brimmed hat 
and at least SPF 30 on your face every day whilst you're using it. So there are some tips for you guys when you're considering your next moisturizer. What else can be done? Well, there are certainly are some other in-home treatments that you can do such as IPL or some basic laser treatments. But again, these treatments must really be consulted with your own adequately qualified healthcare professional to make sure it's appropriate for you. Aside from all of the in-home treatment options that you can consider, there are also some clinic options that you might want to consider as well. Not only do we talk about the dermal fillers, which can be used to plump up the face or the lips, for example, or just to rejuvenate the face a little bit to help reduce the signs of aging, but we can also use anti-wrinkle injections into the face, which will help to reduce the lines and appearances of the wrinkles. For example, here I've got my lovely model who has got before some really deep furrows on the forehead and then the after with some anti-wrinkle injections. Those, those furrows and those expressive lines have gone away as if it was airbrushed, which is quite a good result if I must say so myself. But remember guys, these treatments do carry risks and it is super important for you to speak with an adequately trained healthcare professional to make sure it is suitable for yourself before embarking on any such treatments. So there you have it guys, a quick roundup of how the face ages, looking through all of the layers of the face, what you can do at home, and also what can be offered in the clinic as well. As always, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions or comments or tips you would like to share about your own anti-aging process, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And for now, take care and stay healthy.